Hello, Madison. <laughs> welcome to episode two. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for having me here in your beautiful home. Yeah, well... It looks like your wife loves you so much. She does love me very much. Uh, we had a couple people bail, so I'm glad you could make it. Oh, <laughs> really cool. Thanks. You're welcome. You telling me I'm your last resort? <clears throat> Today's episode is brought to you by loving and caring. What I do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> and taking out the trash. Mm, speaking of, Yikes. it's time. Yikes. It's time. Yeah. We also have some Amazon boxes over there. I need to go. What do you think of the pregnancy pillow? I think it's great. I think it's going to change my life tomorrow. So, where when you're sleeping, where is like what is the problem? What is the the pregnancy pillow solving? Is it your hips? Yes. And just like the pressure of your hips against the bed? So there's nothing really that I can do about that. But what it's going to help me with is um, having, it's just an easier way. First of all, it's going to support my belly. Because like when you're laying on your side, your belly, like the baby just is like sinking. So it kind of hurts your lower back. Oh, that right. Like, it's, like, drooping down. Yes. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, it's a baby. You know? Right. And he's heavy. He's mm-hmm. two pounds now. What the freak? Anyway. Um, second of all, uh, you, it's good to have a pillow between your knees for your back and your hips. Mm-hmm. Because, um, like, your hips are at a weird angle when... Your knees are together when you're sleeping on your side. Does that make sense? Like your your legs aren't aligned. Like one of your right. legs is going like this, right? Instead of being at a, like a better angle. So should you do that even if you're not pregnant? Like just Probably, for your hips. Yeah, yeah. It's just worse when uh-huh. you're pregnant. Like Papa has to sleep. He has a special knee pillow for him to have between his knees every night because his hips are so bad. Hmm. So, and it's good for your lower back. Anyway, it's just a good, like, all-in-one, um, because, like, your ankles can hurt, uh, sleeping on your side because they're touching, Mm -hmm. and if they, like, get misaligned throughout the night, that can, like, mess up your back, and anyway... Sleeping during pregnancy is just a joke, so... Yeah. I know. Like, it seems like you already didn't sleep that good. Yeah. Like, I was laying on the ground earlier testing out my my, my new pillow, and I started to, like, I go slip grab quickly into... No. <laughs> slip quickly into some sleepy it. time, and <laughs> I, I had to stop myself because if I slept then, then I had no chance of sleeping tonight. So you should wear it like a, an, an airplane pillow. You should take that on a plane. <laughs> yeah, take this on a plane. <laughs> wow. uh, don't mind me. <laughs> Can you That's nice. Sitting next to us. This is going to make a great thumbnail. <laughs> oh, man. It's like so big. <laughs> and what's funny too is it looks like legs. True. So like, and it was sticking out underneath the bottom of our couch. So it just looked like our couch had like, had smashed a gray ogre. Yeah, or something like that. <laughs> IDK man. IDK. Oh. Um. I want to talk about the name of your podcast. Have we decided on a name? No. I was going to do, uh, this is not the Reed show. And why were you going to do that, Reed? Madison, excuse me. I'm in the middle of a sentence. Um, I forgot this is your show, not mine. Where was I? Colon. I'm sorry for the interruption. Colon. Um, (laughs) what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, I was going to call it, this is not the Reed show, um, but when I 
did that, it said that like Apple, I guess, was like, this is not a real show. And they what are you telling us here? He's like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Don't you know the first step to making a show is making it a show? So anyway. Um, oh, yeah. Didn't they think it was a test podcast? Yeah. A test podcast. Man, technology is too smart right. for us. Right. So then I changed it to just read talks. Oh, I just turned on the computer and like <laughs> my ears. Um and then I just turned it to read talks because I wanted to just have it something a placeholder, and now it's just read. I think it's read talks. Yeah, it's read talks. But I don't know. I might change that. I like this is not the read show. I think you should tell the backstory. So, the backstory, my fellow Americans, is. Um. <laughs> That, uh, so when I was a little kid, I was a huge ham. Mm, was and, a huge ham. And I was uh, always, like, a, attention-seeking and I always wanted to make a big show and was, like, always trying to make my whole family laugh and my brothers and stuff. This is going to burn my ears out. Okay. I mean, it still seems to say something, Maddie. Hello. Okay, perfect. Still seems to be working. <laughs> um, okay, where was it? So I was a big attention honk, and my parents would always say, this is not the Reed show. And they would say, like, okay, simmer down. This is not the Reed show. And so that was kind of like a theme of my childhood <laughs> <laughs> my now adulthood. So I was like, just in case my dad ever sees it, like, oh, no, dad, it's okay. This is not the Reed show. And that's what I think. I love it. Thanks. Just to remind you, this is not the Reed show. This is not the Reed show. This is just two people having a conversation and falling in love. All because two people fell in love. Um, what do you want to talk about? Whenever someone asks me that question, I think of the scene in Pitch Perfect where they sing the, let's talk about sex, baby. Mm. Let's talk, talk about, about you and me. me. Let's talk about all, all the, the good things and the bad things, things that, that may be. be. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. I'm also seeing a different version. Um, that's a great movie. It is a great movie. The second and third, not so, so good. good. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I don't like them, but, like, someone probably does. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my mom dies at that little, the girl who has, like, the little voice. The Guatemalan you know, girl. The Guatemalan girl. She thinks that's, like, the funniest thing. The first one actually is really funny. It's a good one. Well made. Thanks. Music is catchy. Yeah. Dancing is great. Uh, well-timed uh, vomit scenes. Ooh, so true. I remember I actually went to see that movie with my brothers on a whim, and we had no idea what it was. And, like, we just, like, walked in, and the first scene is the vomit scene, and we're, like, sitting on the front row. And we're like, what is this movie? Like, I cannot believe we rolled the dice and got this gym. You should I, watch that. I actually really do like that movie. I do, too, and I have not seen it in years. Yeah. It's a good one. That's back when... Uh, Rebel Wilson was like new, so she was funny. Yeah. Because now it's kind of like we're used to her a little bit, and her comedy hasn't really well, like. She just is the same character in every movie she would. Yeah. You know? And it's like, it's 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 kind of too predictable sometimes. I think, like that movie. Oh my gosh, the one with Anne Hathaway, Hus Hustlers. Mm -hmm. Was that what it's called? I think so. The Hustle. The Hustle. That movie sucked. Yeah, that was bad. Which is so sad because Dirty Rotten Scoundrels is a great classic. Yeah, that is a great movie. Add that to the list of movies that we should watch. We have watched it. Maddie, you can watch a movie now, Maddie. 
Oh. You are not the kind of guy that likes to watch movies more than once. True. That is true. <laughs> well, okay. I am the kind of guy that likes to watch a movie more than once. You're the kind of guy that watches a movie, the same movie, every day <laughs> for years on end. It's kind of like, reminds me of a movie, Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> My God. And you're like petting like a doll as you watch the movie. Are you done? <laughs> no, I was waiting for your undivided attention. Um, Madison, I brought you here today for you to list off all of the ways that you love me. <laughs> and they can be sexual. Oh, wow. You don't have to Draw say. Draw a them. blank. You. I didn't know that turned you on. Um, just you don't have to actually say them. You can literally just count, and I'll know. <laughs> Tell us about your game you played with baby today. It was the cutest thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, he kicked me, and so I poked him right where he kicked me. Mm-hmm. And then he kicked me again in a new spot. So I poked him right where he kicked me. And then I tried poking in a new spot. And he kicked me right where I had poked. And it went on for like three minutes. And then I got really sad because then he stopped playing with me. And I was like, okay, buddy. See you later. Have fun with your friends. But yeah, it was really fun. He's already playing with you, huh? Yeah. That's so cute. Just like a little like whack-a-mole. And you know, it could just be a uh, pregnancy brain. It could just be imagining that. But I mean, it was in like right. the exact same spot. Like, could be total coincidence. He could just be angry. Mm -hmm. I could be thinking it's this cute moment and he could just be pissed that someone's infringing on his space because he does not have a whole lot of space. No. Yeah. Just like, bloop. Yeah. Bloop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly like that. So yeah, that was fun. Um, it's weird. Like I'll probably wake up tomorrow and not feel the way I did today. But <gasps> excuse me. Wow. Um, I'll have days every once in a while where I just feel like I have no more room inside me, mm -hmm. and I feel like. My skin is stretching. I feel like my belly is so tight mm -hmm. that it's going to, like, pop, which would be so gross. Um, and then tomorrow I'll wake up and it'll be, like, fine again and, like, a little squishy and it's weird. That is weird. Uh, I would like to apologize to all of your viewers that the only thing I can seem to talk about whenever I come on your beloved show, is pregnancy. It's okay. We can edit it out. Hmm. Crickets. We can just have, like, a voiceover of, you know, action stars. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about Toastmasters? Yes. So, I went to Toastmasters today. For posterity. We'd like to record this for posterity. Um... I'd like to remind everyone before he starts this story that this is not the Reed show. Just a reminder. Hmm. Apple actually turned down that name, so this is the Reed show, <laughs> Biatches. Um, so, went to Toastmasters today um, because public speaking is something that I would really like to do. That's very exciting and very fun for me slash I hate it because <laughs> it like freaks me out so it's kind of like one of those things that you really want to like it's like Jekyll and Hyde how I feel about it how so you I, feel emotionally and intellectually about it does not match how you physically feel yes about how it. I physically react to it and yeah. I wasn't always that way um basically since I came home from my mission it was like, for whatever reason, and I think it has to do with the Portuguese maybe, and I had to do public speaking in Portuguese, and that like like 
freaked me out so much because like, well, what if I can't focus out there? Then like, I'm just gonna get caught out there without enough words. Um, well, and public speaking is such a it's a huge thing, and it's something that you want to be able to like prepare for, yeah, and have all of your words be concise yeah. and uh, eloquent. Yeah. And if you're doing that in a completely new language, yeah. like, that's just awful. Anyway, keep going. No, it's true because like even just speaking the language was a chore, much less like portraying an idea, teaching, using the right words, yeah, using the right like vocal inflection. Yeah. Um, and I think that kind of like freaked me out. So when I came home, I public speaking made me really nervous, which is too bad because before my mission it was something that I loved which is why I'm like torn now yeah um but anyway I was like well I gotta get over this so I went to Toastmasters just looked it up just went down there um and it was interesting it was I actually do think it's really valuable Uh, it's very like formal and like everyone like has a job it's been around for they said something like a hundred years wow it's actually like a really big um i don't know it's like a long time ago anyway um, i liked it they had like a little speech competition thing at the end which is like an improv um impromptu speech where they just give you the topic and a word you have to use um uh, like just on the spot and you have to think of a speech and i did that and i won which was fun um what what there weren't that many people they weren't even trying really. Okay, they're all members of the club. True, true, that and is true. And um, they're all like older, like a lot older, much more experienced than you. True, true. It was good. I, I did enjoy it, and it's something that I want to keep doing, not necessarily Toastmasters, maybe, but like I would like to get out and um, try – to just do it more, just do yeah, public regularly. speaking in any form. Right. I had that idea to go and jump from like testimony meeting to testimony meeting to try and um, just like <laughs> do reps. I still reps. think you should do that. Yeah, because every time you do it, it's like you, you fill up like a little cookie jar of experiences that the next time you do it, you can look back on, and it makes you a little bit less nervous. You could do it at open mic night. <laughs> that would freak me the heck out. Because open mic night is like top tier, right? Like stakes. Yeah, you know, that's cause true. Because everybody claps or they don't clap. They clap or they laugh, and not only that, they're like, they're they're not, they're ready to judge. You know, at open mic, they're like, yeah. "Are you funny enough for me?" They're the most it's like cynical cutthroat. group of people, probably. Yeah, yeah, it's cutthroat. That would be something I'd be interested in doing someday. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Well, needless to say, I was very proud of him because it's been something I've watched him improve on so much since we started dating. Like, even though his words have always been so eloquent and his content has always been amazing, I've watched him get less and less nervous because he would physically shake. Manny, what are you saying? And it wasn't as bad as... What? (laughs) <laughs> it wasn't kidding. as bad as he ever thought it was. That's that's the thing. It's like it we wasn't always, as noticeable. Yeah, yeah. It's, we always think. In fact, most of the time, like I couldn't even see it. But like, the more I like got to know you, I could hear it in your voice a little bit. Yeah, like the tone of your voice. But your content was still amazing. Your delivery was still amazing. It's just well, like you felt like you were not at your peak performance, but nobody else knew that. One of the interesting things about like feeling anxiety. I think just about everyone feels when they're going to go do public speaking is that anxiety kind of like perpetuates itself. Yeah. Because you become afraid of the anxiety more than the thing that created the anxiety, uh, which is like the worst thing ever. So with public speaking, for example, it'd be like I would go up and I'd be like a little bit afraid. So you'd be like a little nervous and like, oh, no, I'm coming across as nervous. And then you're more afraid of coming across as nervous than actually speaking. So the thought of coming across as nervous makes you more nervous. And then it just like builds on itself. Um, Yeah, it's like a vicious cycle. I just love that about you. And I love that you're pursuing a podcast. 
why do you think that you're so interested in the podcast? I don't know. Um, I I listen to podcasts a lot, and I don't know. I always feel close to the people that I'm listening to. Like if you listen to like a three hour podcast, you feel like you're in the room with them. Yeah, that's why I kind of like the more freestyle um, version of a podcast, just because to me. The stream of consciousness. Yeah, it just feels, I don't know, it, it, it feels good. I remember many times driving uh, and listening to, like, long podcasts. And you, like, feel connected to those people and feel like you can understand them because, the, the like, the fluid way that, that you express yourself when you're on a, a that type of podcast, it shows more personality in ways that you can't really mimic. Yeah. You know, it's like something that I think about, too, like the difference between watching an action scene, like a really good action scene in a movie versus watching it like actual clips of it on YouTube. You know, like if you watch something on YouTube of a car accident, for example, um, and it's a normal car accident, let's say someone gets T-boned. Yeah. You can tell just by looking at it. Like, you feel an emotion. Like, oh, those are real people. Like, even if it was filmed 10 years ago, like, those are real people. Someone really got hurt, and this drama instantly kind of grips you. And when you're watching a movie, you know that deep down people aren't getting hurt. And you can tell, and it's really hard to describe what it is about, like, a car crash or something like that, like Fast and Furious. Right. That the cars might even really crash, but you can just feel the authenticity when you see something like that for real. And it's the same thing that happens when you listen to a podcast. Because it's like the best actors in the world, they can't, they can't be imperfect perfectly like you would in a normal conversation. Right. Uh, <coughs> and so a lot of times they try to like manipulate that and they're great at it. But it just, I don't know. I have liked that. And I've liked feeling that connection, and it seems like you understand people a little bit more. So I was like, why not do it? <laughs> yeah. I think as well as that is that on a very, like, base level, like, at, at the root of all of this is your love for people. Yeah. And you're, you have a very strong belief, I think, that I've seen in you that um, – and it – I feel like I know this because I watch how you act and you act and what you believe um, is that you believe everyone has something valuable to share. Everyone has something inside them that someone needs to hear. And mm -hmm. I really like that about you. And I think that that is Ma mainly what drives you I think I think you love talking to people I think you love like you said connecting with people from all different walks of life and seeing what you can draw from them knowing that even if someone is in like a I don't know stereotypically lower situation than you are or a higher situation you think that or you know that um you have something to gain from them and they have something to gain from you because we're all inherently valuable. Yeah. No, I really like that. Thank you. You're welcome. I really like the idea of going into every interaction and assuming that the other person knows something that you don't know. Yeah. And there's value to talking with just about everyone. It's one of the things I love most about you since this podcast is about me telling you all the things I love about you. That is one of them. Perfect. That's what the whole episode's about, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Not sexual, but I'm still glad you Whoa. brought it up. <laughs> Whoa. Um, no, I, I do. I yeah, I really like I really like talking with people, and that's why it's kind of fun to do something like this, even if like no one ever listens to it. Is that it's an excuse for me to like to connect with people and sit down and let them feel heard. I think it's valuable uh, to me and to them. I think it's also interesting with podcasts, um, like listening to the Joe Rogan podcast 
I've only listened to a few of them with you, but mm-hmm. um, it's interesting to watch as the podcast evolves, as the conversation evolves throughout um, the course of their time together, like how different the beginning of the conversation is sometimes to the end of the conversation, like yeah. where they end up yeah, compared to where they started, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's really cool to see inside someone's mind and watch where their train of thought goes and mm-hmm. learn about things from people that you never would hear about otherwise. Yeah. You know, and it tells you a lot about a person where their mind goes. Yeah. Um, and it's not always where you'd expect. It's one thing I've loved listening to like Joe Rogan's podcast is that you're listening to Alex Honnold, who was you know, the greatest rock climber, or at least he had one of the greatest feats in rock climbing history. And he's talking about you know, vegetarian options that are crustaceans because they feel even less than plants feel. And I remember listening to that and like, oh, why does he know so much about this? And it's interesting that like people's mind goes to a way different place than you know. There, there's so much more to people than you know. Right. And especially people that are famous because they're known for one thing. And they're probably sick of talking about the one thing right. that they're good at. Or the one thing really bland. Yeah. yeah. So I just, I don't know. And, and I also really like podcast style because it's good brainstorming. It's good just like creative energy. Some of the, the kind of biggest breakthrough moments that I've ever had were in conversation we're talking and bouncing ideas off of like just feeling someone else's energy it's like you can't talk with yourself and just being able to bounce ideas off of someone is you know it's exciting to me right i don't know i like that about you thanks there's two (laughs) yeah i um i don't know i'm just in awe of it because i am so not this kind of person Mm mm-hmm I don't know if I share the same belief that you do. I like to think that I do. <laughs> what do you mean, share the same belief? <laughs> Just that everyone has something to gain from someone else. That's a lie. I really do feel like that. I just express it in different ways. <laughs> I'm not as open and willing to be vulnerable, which is a problem. But I've gotten a lot better. Yeah? Yeah. I've grown a lot since we've been married. And I think you have too. Yeah, absolutely. I was talking to Jake about this today, just very briefly. My brother. Um, I noticed. Sorry, I noticed. Maybe we should change the microphone setting, because I'm noticing that like, right aligned with it, the sound is way better than like if I go up here. Okay. Just FYI. Cool. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. It's your brother Jake. Do you want to change the setting right now? Nah. Okay. Do you want me to just keep leaning in? I can hear you. I ch- Hello. I, I changed it so I could hear you back there. Hello. Anyway, um, my brother Jake texted me today and said that it's a new feeling for him to feel like intellectually attracted to someone. Mm-hmm. Like he said he's never felt that before. And I told him like, that's the good stuff. <laughs> you know, you, you can find a million people that you think are physically attracted but when you find someone that you're intellectually and spiritually attracted to like that is what makes marriages and relationships thrive Mm -hmm. you know like i think of how far you and i have come since our first conversations ever and it's just kind of nuts you know yeah and and it is actually kind of a sign of a relationship that you can have good conversations. It's a sign of a good relationship because it's like you're you're constantly giving each other little bits of permission to like you know dig a little deeper, be a little bit more vulnerable. Yeah. Right. It's like right when you meet someone, you know, you're putting on your sham wow guy face. <laughs> you're like, this is me. Um, <laughs> Love that guy. Whatever happened to that guy? Whatever happened to those guys? And, you know, you're not really showing what you're really like. Even with, like, this podcast, like, there's still a lot of a feeling of I want to come across in a certain way. Yeah, there's a level of. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's kind of why I want to keep doing these so that I can, like we did, over time, kind of bridge the gap between Feel a little bit more transparent. Yeah. Shamwell guy and then actual guy way underneath. Scary. And so building those connections, you're like constantly giving each other a little bit more permission to show who you really are. Right. And I think through conversation is that's basically the, the best way that I know to do that. I agree. I think one thing that you've taught me to do that I had never really done before is to ask myself the hard questions. Like, ask myself the questions that are painful yeah. and that hurt, mm-hmm. but that I know will make me better. You know, it's like I kept them behind this curtain in my mind, and you helped me to just like, yeah, no, you should pull the curtain back and just ask yourself the hard question. And then That's it's hard. Like, and then once you pull back the curtain, it's like, oh, yeah, no, I don't want to be that girl that I was before this moment and I'm going to do better. Yeah. And I, I still am working on that. Oh, me too. And I will be probably for the rest of my life because it does not come naturally to me. But I've now gotten to the point where I'm, where that's a good feeling to mm-hmm. me. Like I acknowledge so much faster that there's a question that I'm not asking myself yeah. <laughs> behind the curtain and I'm a lot more willing to open it up because of you. Well, I like to think of it as, you know, what advice would you give to a friend in yeah. the same situation as you? I always try to think of that with myself. Right. I'm like, man, like I'm just like so groggy all the time and, and my I just like always am moody. And I would say to a friend, you know, like, well, what time are you going to bed? Are you eating? Are you stretching? Are you yeah. exercising? Are you getting out and socializing? But to myself, like, you don't want to say those hard things to yourself sometimes. A lot of yeah. times you even know them, but just admitting that there's something that you could do to improve your situation is pressure to actually make that decision. I do this weird thing all the time. This may not even be related, but I do this weird thing where sometimes there's a thing that I want, and I know it takes effort to get it. And so I will actually hope that I don't have the option because then I you will have, have to, to put the in the effort. effort. Right. Even with like silly things. I noticed this as a kid. Like, I, this is so weird. I was, you know, hungry or something. And I would come home like, man, like, I would love some mac and cheese right now. And then I would look in the pantry and hope that there wasn't actually mac and cheese because I was so lazy. I didn't want to actually make it. <laughs> and so I was like, man, then I have an excuse to myself. Like, why are you hungry? Like, well, sorry, self. Like, there was actually no mac and cheese in there. And that's like, that sounds like a silly example, but. Sorry, self. Like, sorry, self. Better luck next time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go through the process, which is so funny. It, I think Christmas there's actually. Came and went as if. There's like, I think there's actually like a profound um, idea there that your mind is both aware of the things that you want and need, but also afraid of what it takes to get them and wants to protect you oh, from yeah. your own ambition. Totally. You know, like even with this podcast, you know, like you go through every possible bit of resistance before you do something important. And so I was like, well, this sounds fun. Like it's something that for whatever reason just drew me in, but... And then you kind of hope, but, you know, like, I don't really have time right now. Or, no, my microphone's not working. But it's this, like, superficial hope. Because then when it doesn't happen, you're, like, even more emotionally broken down, you know? Um, Yeah, it doesn't make you happy. No. But it also, like, it's uh, kind of like comfort. Totally, Like, the bad kind of comfort, like complacency. When you have that good feeling that, like your game was canceled have you ever had that or that the friends canceled the outing Mm -hmm. and weirdly like you wanted to go yeah and you wanted to play in the game right but that kind of complacent demon sneaks in like oh thank goodness yeah i mean your brain wants to protect you from pain because Mm -hmm. those are the messages that it's getting all day long the messages of where you're hurting Mm -hmm. and it sends things immediately 
um, you know, like blood cells and um, all those scientific things <laughs> that I learned in biology <laughs> to, to biology fix the major. pain. Failed it. Good job, me. Nice. Um, yeah. It, and avoid the pain. Its job is to, yeah, is to yeah, and protect do whatever it can to protect you from that pain. Yeah. Even. Ego is a real thing. And in most cases, to your own, like, peril. Yeah. Well, I do think that, specifically in my case, I don't know if this is the same for everybody. I feel like it's a pretty um, widespread general truth mm-hmm. that we are our biggest resistance you know um i think some people are more prone to self-empowerment and believing in themselves Mm -hmm. and um have more genuine hope for themselves than that superficial hope that uh, that secretly wishes you just won't even have a chance so wishes that you don't you have don't, to embarrass yeah. yourself. Wishes that you don't make the team yeah. so that you don't lose. Yeah. It's a, the quote that I didn't or understand. Or that tryouts get canceled so that you don't have to not make the team. Or, or that the girl will be sick so you don't have to take her on the date. Yeah. Even though you like her. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, because the fear of pain. Oh. hey <laughs> This is a great setup. We should figure out something new. Um, because, I, like I was saying, because the fear of pain, a lot of times, especially over time as you get older, becomes stronger than the the joy of victory yeah. that's happened to me in a lot of ways it's like especially I was, I was reading a book and it talked about um results over status like if you get you're specifically talking about like ceos if you're a ceo and one of the biggest problems that ceos have is that they start to be driven and motivated by their status a lot of times that's good to become a ceo because your results lead you well i guess your ego leads you to results right. it's like you want i want to be ceo i'm just a manager like i need more results to satisfy the ego that wants to be ceo the problem with that is if your ego is satisfied with a title once you actually get the title you actually because of fear of losing the title would rather do nothing because every every single step that you take is risk of failure. Right. And you already have satisfied the ego. You already have the title. You're already yeah. CEO. Why risk it? Why change the initiative of the company? Why bring in a new you know marketing campaign or why fire anyone or, or anything like that? Things that CEOs need to do, they need to take risks. Right, right. Because it's now become about maintaining the status. And I think that's the same thing as you get older. When you're a kid, you just you go out and you do, and you you play and you win and you you lose, and you fall, you get hurt and everything, and they, they do all kinds of things to a radical degree, where they're falling out of trees and you know breaking ankles and stuff like that as kids. Um, but as you get older, you get kind of jaded, mm-hmm. and you say, well, I would rather have neutral than pain. So yeah. I'll never take a chance in any direction. You self-sabotage. Yeah. And that's a really sad way to be. That's yeah. it. And I, I've seen that in my own life, even with this. You know, it's like, why? Like, I, I'm happy. I'm content. I'm neutral on the scale. Why start a podcast or why put myself out there when there's a possibility of pain and neutral's fine? Yeah. I might as well stay neutral. Well, it's like a muscle. It really is. Like, you work out, you know, X amount of days. Mm -hmm. You work out, working out one day is not equal to sitting on the couch all day long, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. you work out one day and you only get so far, but you sit on the couch all day long for a whole day. 
and you your muscles deteriorate deteriorate a lot faster than they can build up mm-hmm. in that time if you can't just do the same amount of time for both you know that's just never going to get you anywhere um i think it's the same thing for like pushing out of that um that self-sabotaging mode you know like uh the more that you self-sabotage the more that you kind of let yourself um hope that the situation goes awry or that things don't secretly that things don't work out so that you don't have to feel that pain the more that you protect yourself from that pain the harder it gets with each new situation that comes your way and I think opposite the more that you try to push through that boundary the easier it gets every time but it takes a lot more (laughs) pushing through (laughs) to get to a higher point than I think it does like you can push through a number of times and then let one time slip and like bring you all the way back to where you were before yeah no you're, you're totally right that it's, wasn't very eloquent but no you're right there's a there's like a momentum yeah of uh, anxiety and confidence it kills your momentum yeah and it's like every decision that you make you decide to take a little bit of a braver stance or you decide to take a little bit of a chance or you decide to even try I heard that confidence is the willingness to try. And I absolutely love that. Um, And I think that this is a perfect example of that. Because if you have a willingness to try once, then the next time you have a little bit more and you have a little bit more. But like you said, the hard part of that is that it goes way faster than it comes. So in order to like really have sustained confidence, you need to do a hundred times more confidence building than degrading yourself. Um, Kind of like what you've gone through with your Maddie made business. It's like a thousand people. Like, Maddie, this is so great. I love this. You're so talented. And you're like, oh, I, I am talented. Like, someone does like it. And then you'll get oh, another one. And I, then I'm not a complete phony. Right. And then, like, you'll get a wedding venue. And then you'll get a big client. And your stuff's in a store. And then, like, one person will comment something negative, And it's like all this ground just got cut in half. Yep. And it's like. The momentum forward is so much harder. Oh, yeah. Which is why I feel like having people around you constantly that are giving you confidence is so important. And reading things and following pages on Instagram and watching videos or whatever it is that you do, um, things that align with where you want to be and how confident you want to feel is like the most important thing you can do because it takes a tiny bit to ruin. Yeah. So you got to surround yourself with it if you want to have any chance of actually yeah. doing it. Um, that's another thing I love about you. Thanks. Is that you're the best hype man on the planet. I am a good hype guy. Oh, man. You're not lying about that. Like, hey, hey, c- hey. I think companies should create hype guy positions. I really do. And I think that you could be the hype guy for yeah. everybody. Well, I just find – I just think it's so fun to – watch people succeed because like i love so much when i finally take a chance and i like put myself out there and i succeed and i think i love it like obviously way more than someone who who's watching obviously um but i and i know that but i would want the praise much more than they can tell that i want it right you you want the recognition you want the praise and so when I see people do things that are really good, uh, or not even just really good, I see people take a chance, yeah. you know, put their stuff in an art show, or like post on Instagram about their business or whatever it is. I'm like, this tiny action of me supporting you is going to be disproportionately accepted by you, and it's going to be a big deal to you for how little effort it is to me because I know that's what it is like for me. Right. Like I saw that with like birthdays I think it's funny I when I first got a Facebook it would always tell me when people's birthdays were and I'd always think like oh my gosh like everyone knows that Facebook tells you when the birthday is so why would I go in and Mm -hmm. write on their wall because like they already know like I I didn't know beforehand they might even be offended because it's like oh you only know it's my birthday (laughs) because of Facebook 
And then, you know, so you end up not putting it in people's wall and, like, whatever. You're trying to be too cool. And then your birthday comes. And some random lady, you know, from your ward when you were six who knows your mom and whose name is, like, grandmother and on her Facebook name, she'll comment, like, happy birthday, Reed. And you're like, oh, my gosh. She remembers me. And she loves me. And I'm just so glad that she's in my life. When in reality, it's just, like, disproportionate yeah when it's you on the receiving end it's so true the good is really good and the bad is really bad but when you're giving it like you don't even notice like oh hey yeah you look uh, you look good today and then oh my gosh this is the best day <laughs> of my life you're like hmm not the i wouldn't have gone with khakis I'm like, oh my gosh, I look like a crocodile hunter. I hate myself. You know, it's just like <laughs> people, you just read into it. Also, Steve Irwin, may he rest in peace. Rest in peace. They should make a show of his. Have you seen his kid? Bindi? I don't know his name. I just oh. saw him on like Jimmy. I don't know what Kimmel his kid's name is. Um, I don't know either. Is he his dad He's 2.0? Just like him. Yeah. I Have they made a documentary of Steve Irwin's life? I would so watch that. I would also watch it. Let's do that right after this. I, I like watched a video of him the other day, and he's just like, he's just the ultimate guy to like. He's passionate, and he's fun, and he's also like loving animals and loving the environment. But his kid is just like, he was on I, Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel, and mm. he came out, and he's just like, well, I'm here with a crocodile, and if look at this cute little guy. And I was like, oh, my gosh. He's like, they need to... Make a reboot True. with the fam, and I think the mom and daughter are like that too. Right. Yeah, be like the wild thornberries. Is that the the wild thornberries ripped off of Bethlehem? <sighs> I was thinking about uh, our baby's name actually while you were talking about all of that. Yeah, this Nigel Thornberry. Yeah, <laughs> smashing. <laughs> Back to our previous <laughs> conversation about. You know how when it's you, the good is really good and the bad is really bad. But yeah. when someone's giving it, it's not a big deal. Like yeah, you know, we we like, decided on a name and it was this huge victory because oh, it was it was honestly kind of a fight before. Yeah, yeah. Like we did not agree at all, and then we found out he was a boy, and all of a sudden it was just like this kind of magical experience where we both were like, yeah, and we kind of came to it at the same time and. I'll never forget that moment. But what people have started asking us, you know, do you have a name? Have you picked out a name? And then we'll be excited and we'll tell them. And <laughs> their first response most of the time. Almost always. always. Been, hmm. Interesting. We're no. like, we didn't pick like a really weird, unique <laughs> name. No. I don't know. There are a lot of people, famous yeah. people. That yeah. are named that. It's just and it's funny. always like, yeah, when you put yourself out there, you, you just like, you're so sensitive to it. And like, do you like me? Like, what are you saying <laughs> through your facial expression right now? <laughs> Please love it. Well, yeah. we've talked about this a lot, how important it is when you're supporting someone um, or like they've come to you in this vulnerable position or they're excited to mm -hmm. show you something they've been working on how important your first sentence, your first f like facial expression is. Yes, you cannot take that back. No, and that's what they'll remember is that first, like if you go, well, have you thought about this? Instead of saying, I think this is so awesome, I'm so excited now, have e you thought yeah. about this? E exactly, but even it if you have a take, doubt. Yeah. Even if someone's bringing you a terrible idea. Oh yeah. People are always like, I've heard that argument. Like, well, if someone's bringing me a bad idea, I want to protect them and like let them know it's bad. Right. And I get what they're saying, but just give them. Or like, like expressing like, gratitude first, right. at least. You know, give them the courtesy. Them opening to, up to you. To, yeah, to give them a second of like. Yeah. Uh, so the next time they go to tell someone something, they're not, it's not quite as scary. Because yeah. that's the most, vul sorry. No. That that's the most vulnerable time period is mm -hmm. that like breath in between when you finished your sentence you're presenting this to mm -hmm. them and what they're gonna respond with yeah. you know that's like the most vulnerable like 
and I they can put just, it out there. They can I'm rip naked. Your heart out. Uh. Yeah, for real. Like you're like, and I want to start, you know, a company. And like, okay, I support it a hundred percent. And you're still the, like, they do the frowny face. And even if they support it after that, yeah, it's still like the dagger. It's there. jaded, yeah. Yeah, they're like, okay, if that's what well. you want. And you're like, okay, well, screw me, I guess. Yeah. Um, I one of my biggest regrets, honestly, I I really do think about this all the time, and it's really sad, is my brother Stuart came to me one time when I was like in junior high school or elementary school I was like sixth grade and so he was gonna make me sad yeah I, I, sixth grade and like fourth grade or something yeah. like that and he was he had drawn like this robot thing and it was like 10 feet tall or whatever it was like this huge like transformer type thing and he had spent hours on it mm. and I was doing something and he came up to me like so excited it seriously makes me so sad to think about and he came up and he's just like look at this like isn't this so cool like we could build it like me and you we'll get all the parts and we'll make it and my initial reaction because you know at that age you like think you're so smart i'm like uh really you think that that would work and i start like pointing out all of its flaws like that scene in click that we saw the other day i'm like how would this possibly even work he's wearing rollerblades like a machine's not gonna wear rollerblades there's a microwave in his arm why don't you you know like it's like all these random as a little kid and I remember he even said, he was like, I thought if anyone would be excited, you would be excited. And I was like, as soon as he left, oh. I was so sad. That was a dagger. Yeah, I felt so, so bad. And I was like, man, I just Poor Stu. shattered. And not just that I, maybe I didn't shatter his confidence, but I like ruined what an opportunity to have a really awesome moment. Yeah. You know? That's a very Stuart thing, though, for him to come yeah. with a plan to build yeah. something. He's so cute. Yeah, he was a very cute. He builds all of his Halloween costumes mm -hmm. from scratch. I remember around that same time period, we got a like stereo. Yeah. And he like deconstructed the whole thing, and he we're looking inside at like the microchips and everything. We Ooh. thought it was so fun, <coughs> and then after a while, once we got bored of it, we like put it back together. It didn't work. Um, and we just like smashed it with a hammer on our driveway oh. and it was the greatest thing ever. Cool. Oh man. We should take you to one of those places where you can just go wreck stuff. Yeah. Um, I probably shouldn't be admitting this, but allegedly one time me and all my friends went to this abandoned cabin in the woods in the mountains okay and it was right by this friend's cabin it's like right next to it okay and i don't know how we knew it was abandoned one the tv light was on but it was like old old tv like from the 80s it like the little red light on which freaked us out because we went at night and it was, seemed kind of haunted um the story is getting away from me but the house was freaky and i think it was abandoned we found all these pictures that like little kids had drawn which also freaked us out there were still clothes in the uh, closet and like there was a light on and stuff like that so anyway we went in there and just destroyed the entire thing we just like got a bunch of mallets or something not the walls at least i don't think but because I, th I think they were gonna like tear it down or something but there was like still furniture and weird stuff there, just really old. And I guess it had been there for a long time. So we just like went in and just like we're smashing plates on the ground. And like I remember my friend threw a mug and it stuck into the wall. And it was like the coolest thing of my entire life. It didn't smash. It was like, Dum! and seriously, it was so like liberating and so fun. And it also like put your mind into kind of like a savage place like you're like oh, there's no rules and just start smashing a toilet you know it was seriously probably one of the funnest things i have ever done in my life allegedly 
two things. Here we go. I don't feel like you will ever be able to run for president of the United States, man. Yikes. So. <laughs> <laughs> now that this is out there in the universe, I feel like you've ruined your chances. <sighs> Second thing. Uh, you use the word allegedly. Uh, yeah, I do. Is that to cover up? Is that to just like cover your bases, just in case anyone comes at you? Because <laughs> just in case people have been looking. You had a lot of details about that story. Um, I just Mugs remember sticking into the wall. It's so weird. I just remembered that I had a dream about that uh, last night, and it was all incepted. I don't know what it is. Um, but if if I did it. <laughs> also, of course, I use the word allegedly. I just watched the Aaron Hernandez documentary. What do you think? What do you think? I like it when the red water comes up. Name that. We're done. <laughs> okay. I think that's it. <laughs> Cut. We've reached the end of the night. Here today. it come, dear. Fancy seeing you here. Salad fingers. Give me a kiss. End it on a kiss. Go. They got it on a Say something nice to me. Say something nice. Um. Did you know that the voice for Mickey and the voice for Minnie got married in real life? No, but that's really sweet. Well, see, you it's said say life. no. That's the truth. You said say something nice. I meant for you to say something nice about me, but. You didn't say that, honey. That was really sweet. We've been talking about I'm communication. <laughs> well, isn't that nice? Don't you appreciate that? Yeah. You're welcome. Can you say something nice about me now? Yeah. Honey, you are so beautiful. I did not say sing something nice to me. I said say <sighs> something nice to me. Madison. Dearest Madison. Oh, how I love thee. You're stalling. <laughs> <laughs> These are filler words uh, so you can think of something uh, nice to let say. Let me count the ways. <laughs> One. One. <laughs> Hear me out. Two. Two. Yeah, I know this trick. Please. You have the most beautiful eyes of anyone living or dead that I've met personally. <laughs> Come here. I'm just testing the microphone. <laughs> That's a wrap. The voice of Minnie and Mickey seriously got married in real life? Yeah, they got married in real life. Are you lying to me? If you're no. lying to me, I swear. I there will never, never be lie. another podcast again because you will be dead in your bed tonight. Can you continue the podcast, though? If that yeah, does duh. Okay, so I, I just won't be in it.